Do you notice the words I use? Ancient masters of celestial lore. Guys, I, that, I mean, did, did Helena Blavatsky write the script to this video? Because it really does seem like it. When we say the names, right, so we speak their names, we say her name, say their names, we do that all the time, that you kind of invoke that spirit, and then those spirits actually become present with you, right? But guys, they're saying that when you say her name, you invoke her spirit, and she comes, and you can resurrect. That's what these ladies actually just said. Right? Is this only political? I dare say no. There is a spiritual aspect to this. When people all across the world are rising up and having protests and burning down buildings, there is more than just politics going on. There is a dark spiritual movement happening behind the scenes. I am convinced that Beyonce Knowles is an occultist that Black is King is an occult movie meant to initiate you into the occult. And I'm convinced, and I will prove to you, that the three ladies who run Black Lives Matter are nothing more than witches practicing witchcraft on a global scale. The occult is always trying to pretend that it's something else. And it hides behind a veneer of something often. Uh, you will find that the occult is always pretending to be art. It always has been and always will be. There's a, wom there's a woman right now who is a high arch occultist named Mariana Abramovich, and she pretends to be an artist, but she's not an artist. She's a witch. And there's another way that the occult presents itself and hides behind, and that is music. Guys, when you're watching these Super Bowl halftime shows, you're not watching music. You're watching a ritual being practiced. And all of these divas, the Madonnas, the Beyonce's, the Katy Perry's, um, the Lady Gaga's, all of these women are occultists, and they are practicing a ritual right in front of you. And they're, they're pretending like it's music, but it's not music. These, these are not divas. These are witches. But another way that the occult manifests itself and pretends to be is political movements. And I'm convinced that this modern political movement is nothing more than a mass, worldwide, occult ritual putting people under a spell. And I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to show you who Beyonce Knowles is. Now, a lot of people will look at Beyonce and they just they just love Beyonce and uh, and you know and, and no doubt Beyonce as a person is a is a very likable young lady. She's a beautiful young lady, um, and and she has a tremendous singing talent. And as a just as a, as a performer, she's she's tremendous at what she does. And I, actually, I've watched several interviews of her, and and I, I just as a person, I think she's a very very likable young lady. But there's more going on here. Beyonce Knowles is a demon-possessed occultist. There's an entity that possesses Beyonce Knowles, a demon, if you will, that possesses her, and she's very open about this demon. This demon's name is Sasha Fierce. And I just want to show you a video of her explaining this in a couple different interviews. And uh, she's actually on the Oprah Winfrey show right here. And let me just let me just show you what Beyonce is saying because I don't want you to just take my word for it. I want you to actually see what these people are. So, like, when you're getting ready to go on stage and perform, does Sasha Fierce, when does she show up? Usually when I hear the crowd, when I yeah. put on my stilettos, um, when, like, the, the moment right before when you're nervous and, and that other thing kind of takes over for you. Uh-huh. Do you notice that what she says, that other thing takes over for you? That's not good. That's that's a demon that is taking over her. <clears throat> and so you see that this quiet, very respectful young lady, and and her disposition is magnificent. I mean, I, I I just admire how she is and how she touch. She's a very likable person. But when she gets up on that stage and starts doing all that raunchy dancing, that's not her. And she admits that. That is a another. They call it an alter ego, but it's a demon called Sasha Fierce. Um, let's go forward here. She does a British uh, television show, and they talk about Sasha Fierce in this interview. And let's check this out. Charts. Her track "If I Were a Boy" stopped from getting to number one only by the X Factor charity record is the first from Beyonce's third studio album, where she unveils her latest alter ego, Sasha Fierce. Yes, I am Sasha Fierce. 
Tell me. Tell me more. <laughs> you have to say Sasha Fierce with more attitude. Yes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, okay, so there's that. And then she goes on the Tyra Banks show, and I'm not sure what year this is, and I apologize for the low-quality video here, but uh, Tyra Banks actually talks to her about, I, I saw you transform into Sasha Fierce before you went on stage. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Me. That was really nice. You are so welcome. Yeah. And you know what's so funny is I saw you turn into that trans thing. Like you lose your mind. I do. Like I was like, <laughs> she really loses her mind. And it's funny because it's 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 really unreal to see. Like what overtakes you? Because it's like you see her right now. She's like, hi everybody. Yes, I'm Beyonce. <laughs> no, I don't talk about my relationships. And then she gets on the stage. She's like. <laughs> Okay, so there is the Tyra Banks show, and and she there's three different instances right there I just showed you where Beyonce talks about becoming Sasha Fierce. That is classic demon possession. Beyonce Knowles is a demon-possessed young lady. She is an occultist. She is not herself. Uh, and so, and you know, you see in the Bible, demon possession, men that are into all that stuff. Uh, guys... She is not a role model for anybody, including black young ladies. She does not need to be your role model because she is a demon-possessed woman. Now, we're going to go into Black is King, the new uh, video that she made. those an hour and a half kind of music montage, loosely ad adapted of the Lion King. And we're going to get into the occultism in that. But before we do that, I need to play a clip for you so that you can help us just to help you connect all the dots from Third Adam 2. And so we're going to explain the pagan trinity, Simmering Tammuz and Nimrod and this will help you understand what we're about to see in Black is King because that pagan trinity is all throughout this video. And now you have to understand the past. You have Nimrod who is the leader of the people of Babel and he actually fell in love with a woman named Semiramis. Pagan history teaches that Semiramis was an arch occultist and she was a very seductive person and so Nimrod fell for her and ended up marrying her. The problem was is that she was a harlot woman and so what he did is he married her, made her the queen, declared her the holy virgin. Now at this point is where most historians disagree and the timeline of all this is really fuzzy is that it contradicts. And the reason it contradicts is because the source of it. And so what I'm going to give you is what generally most people believe about what happened. Basically what a lot of people believe is that Nimrod died. And Semiramis has to come up with some plan to keep control of the kingdom. And so what she says is, I am now with child immaculately of the reincarnation of Nimrod. And she has a child and that child's name is Tammuz. And she actually had him on December 25th. And so now you have basically the pagan trinity. You have Nimrod and Semiramis and Tammuz. And Nimrod was declared to be the god of the sun. Semiramis was declared to be goddess of the moon. And Tammuz was declared to be the sun of the stars. As this religion evolved over time, the emphasis was not placed on Nimrod, it was not placed on Tammuz, the emphasis was placed on Semiramis, the woman. And what Semiramis was declared to be was the, and Tammuz was declared to be, and she was declared to be the queen of heaven. And so all the worship pointed to the Holy Mother and the Divine Son. And she was given 
all the attention. And so you see there in Third Adam 2, we dealt with the pagan trinity and what that was and why that's significant in today's age. If you will understand that key piece of information, then that will help you to identify occultism today and paganism today when you actually see it. And so with that being said, let's go in and let's examine Black is King. And there you see Nimrod, Semiramis, and Tammuz, the pagan trinity, all throughout Black is King. And uh, it's 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 blatant. Okay. The body, born celestial. Now that right there is talking about this boy being born celestial, meaning that this child is a god man. That's Tammuz right there. And then you see her; she's saying that this is this is my baby. So she's playing the part of Semiramis in this video. And then you see that the background goes to a woman with a with a crown on and as you'll see there if you look close uh that there is a there is a golden crown on her head which was you know what semiramis did where she was uh, the city of babel had the towers and uh, and so she's holding the baby tammuz that is pagan trinity 101 right there in your face in this video and there's another scene here where she paints the face of Tammuz and goes out there and they hold up a little hold hands up to the sun god Nimrod. Guys, this is the pagan trinity right here on Disney. This is right in your face. And so when you get these little key bits of information, it is so easy to see. You see the Nimrods, Tammuz, Semiramis. It's all in your face right there. Now, I want you to see here, they're going to start talking about Ascended Masters, which is another aspect of the occult. And before we go any farther, I want to play a clip of Third Adam, the first documentary we did, Third Adam 1, where I explained the occult getting this higher knowledge from these Ascended Masters. And once you see that, you'll be able to understand what you're looking at here. The Theosophants, you know, you, you try to take bits and pieces of all religions and merge them together. Well, how do you, how do you discern all that? How do you navigate which to take? which not to take well what they believed is that there were there was a higher power who could tell you all that and teach you how to decipher between the two and these were called the ascended masters uh, these were they said these were real entities who really existed and so you have people here on planet earth who need the knowledge that the ascended masters can give you and there were many ways to get this knowledge, but the main way that they did that was something called an astral projection. And an astral projection is called an out-of-body experience by most people. Mainly, uh, what they do is through meditation or something like that, uh, these people actually, they believe that their soul can leave their body and they can travel across the universe and meet face-to-face -face with these ascended masters. gain that knowledge and after they gain that knowledge from these ascended masters then they can come back down and have that knowledge and share that knowledge with mankind and other people and uh, and so they they believe they were enlightened they had a higher level of knowledge than other people now in many forms of the occult the eschatology views that they had at the end times was that eventually these ascended masters would would eventually come down and condescend back to earth and they would you know lead the world into a golden age or a golden era blavatsky actually taught that the human race was not ready for that and so we had to get more knowledge and bring more knowledge and bring more and more and more of this information that was stored up with the ascended masters we had to bring more and more of that down through books and through projections and through all the things that we were doing and eventually there would be enough people on the planet that were enlightened enough to uh, please the Ascended Masters so that they, they would actually uh, be accepted and the world would, would accept these people and accept what they call, just like the, uh, the Buddhist people, they called the Maitreya, the one world leader. And that's what they were looking for. They would teach that there were people who had such divine knowledge imparted to them that they actually achieved another level of humanity, almost like a godlike status. And they believed that the first one 
was named Buddha. And they believe that the second one was actually named Jesus. And they do believe that there is another one that's coming and they are still actually looking for this one because they don't know who he is, but they know he's going to show up pretty soon. And so you see that in the world of the occult, the theosophists with Blavatsky, Aleister Crowley, all of them, they practice this astral projection, going up, meeting with the Ascended Masters, getting the knowledge that they had, and bringing that back down to Earth. That is occultism. That is, that is it's not necessarily Satanism. There's, those are two different things, but this is occultism. And... Anytime people are looking towards the ancestors, which is what they did in, in the Black Panther, all of that is straight up occultism. It was not invented by Marvel movies. Beyonce did not invent this stuff. People have been doing this for centuries, since really since the Tower of Babel and Nimrod. That's the religion of Mystery Babylon. That is occultism. And so when we go to Black is King here in Disney, we see them practicing this and promoting this and and here's a perfect example let's just watch now she's going to talk about you know you're a king and you need you need the wisdom of the ancient ones of our ancestors which is the ascended masters this is the occult right here in front of your face watch this and still always find something like home the great kings were here long before us the great kings. Ancient masters of celestial lore. Do you notice the words I use? Ancient masters of celestial lore. Guys, I, that, I mean, did, did Helena Blavatsky write the script to this video? Because it really does seem like it. But what you're going to see here is this is Simba. And he is going to meet with the Ascended Masters, and he's going to have an astral projection, just like what we talked about here. So this is, this is what it actually says in the Black is King video. Look at the stars. The great kings of the past look down on us from those stars. Kings will always be up there to guide you. So you see there that he is actually floating in space on the astral plane and receiving knowledge from these ancient kings. And so will I. Textbook astral projection. But also you see demon possession in the video. And uh, you'll see that uh, there's a scene here where Uncle Scar, that's who he is right there. And I mean, just it's just blatant demonic imagery all throughout this video. But you see there the... I mean, just unbelievable dark, dark stuff uh, and, and being catered to children. But there's a lot of demon possession there. Uh, yes. Now, there's a lot of strong Hindu imagery in this video, and I want to try to explain it to you. Um, in the video, there is a very prominent character, and the culture calls him the blue man. But really what he is is a picture of Krishna in Hinduism. And he is like a deity type character, and you see him dancing all throughout this all throughout this video. And um, there is a point where he dances with Beyonce, and it, and this is actually a very very close example of the Radha Krishna festival that uh, the Hindu world practices. Now, let me just show you a little bit here of who uh, who Krishna is, and I'll just show you that picture there. Krishna was a a Hindu deity. He was an avatar. 
of uh, of you know which is basically a god man and he uh, he dances with uh, this lady that he falls in love with and this is actually a big festival in the Hindu world because it's the merger of the masculine and feminine which they believe in the dualities and you see the yin and yang and that kind of stuff we'll talk about that here in a second uh, but now I understand I understand the color of this man and why he was that color I understand that with the with the history of slavery and stuff like that uh, but this is awfully close to the Hindu depiction of the Radha Krishna festival. And you see there that they all dance together. And uh, this whole video basically is a prime example of something so strikingly similar to that. And they dance together much of the video, Beyonce and this blue man are seen together. And so I believe he's a picture of Krishna. Now, also here, you see that this video gets into a demonic aspect. Uh, it gets very dark at certain places. And I want you to see this part here with the blue man. What you see there, I slowed this down, is there is a merger of dualities there. And uh, let's just show this again for you. They're leaning on each other, and you see a green and a, and a red. And that is that is a picture of merging dualities, which is an occult concept. And um, if you notice that... Uh, they've got a little circle there that they're they're leaning on, and that's the deal with the occult. The occult believes in merging dualities, because if you read the first few chapters of the Bible, the phrase "God divided" is found many many times. God divided the firmament from the earth. He divided light from the darkness, day from night, uh, land from sea. There's so much that God divided there, and th that's the one thing about God. Everybody thinks that God is a big uniter. Well, really, the truth is God is a divider. And so, a quick study of the early chapters of the Bible, you'll realize that. God is a divider. He divides lost from saved, truth from error, dark from light, the devil's doctrine from his doctrine. Okay, God divides. But see, the occult world is uniting. They believe in merging, what they call merging dualities. And really, when a man gets into the occult, he oftentimes becomes very feminine. And when a woman gets into the occult, he, she often becomes very masculine. Well, why is that? Because God divided male from female, and they're trying to undo that. That's really why a lot of these contemporary Christian singers are very feminine men. Okay, it's because they've gotten into a form of the occult that always happens with the skinny jeans and all that stuff. There, there's there's more to it than just skinny jeans. There is a femininity to a man in contemporary music because of the nature of the occult. The cult the occult merges dualities that God divided. It makes man woman and woman man. And that that's that's really I mean it's called raising your consciousness. There's a lot there with that. I couldn't explain all this video. But that's what they're practicing here. And so you see this in this video here and uh, you see that they are actually merging their duality together. The yin and yang is actually an Asian symbol, but that is a picture of that. Uh, when you see this in a martial arts gym, you better know that you're being you're being taught occultism there in that gym, and so there's more here with that, and we'll, we'll look at this here together. Uh, but the merging dualities is a very very prominent thing in this video. Now, of course, there's a scene where they go to a big hotel and Jay-Z is there. And by the way, Jay-Z's name is not just Jay-Z, it's Jay-Z Hova. It's a, it really is a mockery of God. But I want you to hear what this video actually says. They actually say just straight up textbook occult mantras about dark and light, merging dualities. They actually say that in this video. It's right here in front of your face. Watch it. Dark and light. Duality, the uh, balancing of um, good and evil. All of this is what you need to make a move. Okay, and if you notice, they're on a checkerboard. Okay, so the guy actually said it. He says dualities, good and evil, balancing good and evil, merging dualities. That's what he said. And if you notice that there, there's a scene here where they're all on a checkerboard and they're all you know playing a game of chess. And um, and the chessboard is often used in the occult to de to depict this balance concept. You see that right there. They're on a chessboard. Um, the black and the white, uh, the yin and the yang, the 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 divine feminine, divine masculine. Um, all of that is occultism. If you go into a Catholic church, lots of times the floor is checkered. If you go to Third Adam Two, you'll you'll see that we walked into a Catholic church in Paris, and the floor was complete checkerboard all the way through. Well, that's that's a merging duality concept. That's an occult concept. Uh, if you go 
I've never been into a Masonic Lodge, but I've seen a lot of pictures. Every Masonic Lodge floor is a checkerboard, black and white, merging dualities, because the Masonic Lodge is a form of the occult. And so you see all that kind of stuff in these videos, and you see it right there. And so, I mean, they're playing a game of chess, and the, and the young Simba boy, he comes up with a... Uh, um, the king is representative for you, is representative of the soul. It's not always a battle. It's a and he actually has a, uh, a chess piece here in his hand here in just a second. The king is, the king is you. And there he is playing chess with his father. I don't know if that sounds right. Anyway, you are the king. Okay, so you see him there with the chess piece. This, this is occultism. And if you notice, he has the mark on his forehead. That's a Hindu concept as well. Guys, this is just, this is full of occultism, what you're seeing. This is not art. This is the occult. And the occult always pretends like it's art and entertainment, but it's not. It's the occult. Okay, and so also, I want you to notice, this is the audio soundtrack of the video, of uh, this Black is King video, and it's called The Lion King, The Gift. And if you'll notice here, there is a, uh, there is a lion that is there and it, it, they're shaped in a yin yang uh, structure right there as you see um, and that is that is the merging dualities that's what you have there in in that video they're not even trying to hide it it's right there on the album cover right there in front of your face they're not hiding this stuff uh, they don't need they don't need to hide anymore because everybody's so illiterate when it comes to this stuff nobody even knows what they're watching anymore everybody just thinks it's entertainment and nobody has their spiritual armor on or just spiritual discernment anymore so uh, that's what you have now the next thing here is that you'll see that there is a segment where there's a lot of ancestor worship and this is a uh, this is a form of worshiping the ascended masters that we dealt with in third adam one and you'll see this right here in this segment that is played in the black is king video i'm here mother i'm home your wishes hold your hand through this journey that began before you were born we never forget to say thank you to the ancestors, noble and royal, anointed, our blessings in the stars. Okay, so you see that she she just flat out says it will never forget our ancestors. Guys, black is king is nothing more than an occult ritual about an hour and a half long, indoctrinating you into the occult and doing that under the guise of of some sort of racial heritage 